hello to you who are watching wherever you are and whatever time it is that you are watching. This is the online service for Templestowe Baptist Church for Sunday, June 13, the year of our Lord 2021. And we're online because here in Melbourne, in Victoria, we continue in lockdown. It's a great joy for Heather and I to be with you online. And uh, we are pastor and uh, uh, co-worker uh, in the Lord uh, with Templestowe Baptist Church. So why don't you say hello to? Hello, welcome to this service today. Yeah, we're, we're thinking of folk in the residential aged care, yeah. the orchards community, across the road from the church. Great to be with you online this Lord's Day. Mm. Then we're thinking of uh, visitors who may be joining us online. And we're thinking of uh, all who make up the church and who join us online. Many blessings on all of us from our wonderful God. Heather's going to open our service in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can set a time apart to be with you, worshipping you and hearing your voice with what you have to say to us today. We pray that we will be open, that we will be good listeners, so that we will know the message that you have for us today. Yes. We thank you for your presence with us. We thank you for the joy of being together, even though we're sort of apart, but thank you that we know that we're together with our family in your church. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. The theme of this service is the love of God. And we can sing about that and we'll have a song video uh, that we can all sing along to. And those of us who are regulars with uh, Templestowe Church, uh, we've heard this song before, we're getting to know it. So singing along is something we can do. We will sing about the magnificent, marvellous, matchless, love of God. Let's sing together.
and marvelous, matchless love. How great, how sure His love endures forevermore. Magnificent, and marvelous, matchless love. Well, one of the ways to uh, cope with the lockdown is to look for highlights and to enjoy them. And uh, one highlight uh, for me has been to walk past our dining room table, or really the dining table in our family room, uh, remembering that we're all meant to be at home except for five good reasons and watching Heather put together the jigsaw puzzle uh, which is our solar system and here's the cover and uh, you can see what has been uh, coming together on our dining room table and uh, now it's complete the jigsaw is complete and uh, it's an interesting uh, thing to look at and to, to just notice uh, the various planets in our solar system. But then I just don't look at the dining room table or dining table in our family room. I also look out the window of the uh, room in which my uh, working table is and I can see a plant with beautiful autumn colours and Heather tells me that this is a hydrange, hydrangea, is that how yeah. you say it? Yeah. And uh, look at the colour on that, it's just fantastic. And, and Heather was saying to me, it was quite a surprise that a hydrangea would have the colour, uh, this beautiful autumn colour uh, on, in, in it. So um, it's going to produce white flowers and then those white flowers become red believe it or not. And another highlight for me has been going for walks in the cold. And so out of the drawer uh, in the wardrobe has come the scarf. And back on my head goes the beanie. And it's been good to go for a walk on a cold night and to be rugged up against the cold. Well, enough of that. I hope you have some highlights from your week of lockdown and some highlights in the week uh, ahead of us. Let's now have a reading from God's Word and it can be responsive. It's from John chapter 3 verses 1 to 17 and Heather will read every second verse, I'll read every first verse and why don't you read along with Heather? And Asha has prepared the PowerPoint. Thank you, Asha. And the words will be on screen. So the reading is from John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, 
you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. That everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Well, let me make a few comments on this passage from God's Word. This encounter between uh, Nicodemus and Jesus, that Nicodemus sets up by coming to the Lord, taking the initiative, coming to the Lord at night. It's about life. It's about living. Living under God's reign and living in his blessings. Nicodemus is anxious. He knows that there's more to life. He knows that God is going to act in a life-giving, a life-changing way. The kingdom of God is coming and he wants to be a part of it. And the Lord knows this. And so he immediately tells Nicodemus, once Nicodemus says, I know you're from God because I see what you do. And they signify to me that you are sent from God. So Jesus tells Nicodemus what Jesus wants Nicodemus to know. And that is that no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Verse 3. And this is the answer to uh, the search that Nicodemus has because Nicodemus is wanting to know how to see the kingdom of God, how to be part of the kingdom of God that is to come. So he says to uh, the Lord, I see, I see you, I see your signs. I know that you're from God. I want to see the kingdom of God. And Jesus gives him then uh, this answer. No one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. So now Nicodemus has the question, how can I or how can anyone be reborn? We're already born. How can you be born when you are living already? You have been born and you are old. And Jesus says, you must be born of the Spirit of God to enter the kingdom of God. You must be reborn. You must be born from above. Uh, you must start a new life that is led by the Spirit of God. You must become a new person, living a new life. The Spirit, capital S, Spirit, the Spirit of God gives birth to Spirit, to spiritual life, to a born-again life, to new life. Nicodemus has another question now in verse 9. How can this be? This is his second question. How can I be born again by the Spirit of God? And the Lord gives him an answer. And we can pick it up in verse 14, where Jesus says, The Son of Man, referring to himself, must be lifted up. And that lifting up is a reference to the cross and to his death. Just as the Son of Man must be lifted up, 
so that everyone who believes may then have eternal life in him, may see the kingdom of God, in other words. Here is the answer that Jesus gives to the question of Nicodemus. How can I be born again by the Spirit of God? The Son of Man has come down from heaven and it is with that authority of having come from heaven uh, that he can die for the sin of the world and it is in believing in him that uh, one sees the kingdom of God, one is born again, one is born of the Spirit of God and lives a new life. And so we have this wonderful comment in verse 16 of John 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And it goes on in verse 17, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him, to give life, life that otherwise is lost and forfeited. These are wonderful verses of Christian hope and assurance. So, the answer to the question of Nicodemus, how can I be born again by the Spirit of God? The answer is to believe in Jesus. And what is meant by believing in Jesus, as it is mentioned in John 3.16, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. What is meant is repenting from sin and having faith in Jesus as your Saviour and your Lord. As we do this, the Holy Spirit does his work. And just like the wind um, pushes against us and refreshes us and blows against us on the outside, so within, the wind of the Spirit of God does his work, stirs within, refreshes within, prompts within, leads us into new life gives us power to live a righteous life, a good life, a selfless life, a life that follows the example of Jesus. And so we truly are born again and we are living a new life. And it turns out to be eternal life because death uh, doesn't mean the end of this life that we now have by being born again. This is uh, eternal life, the, the full experience of the kingdom of God, living under the reign of God and in all his blessings. And we only have a foretaste of it now. And, and this was what Nicodemus was searching for. And this is how we live now. We live a born again life. We are saved from judgment and from perishing and from loss of life. We're living the born again life and it turns out to be eternal life, living under the reign of God and with all his blessings. Martin is now going to lead us in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are a great and magnificent God. In the words of Psalm 113, Praise the Lord, you his servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, the one who sits enthroned on high, who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth? Father, we thank you for all the love and the blessings that you graciously bestow on us. We thank you for Jesus and his great sacrifice on the cross. We confess that we are sinners. Father, we, are, we say sorry for all the wrong that we do in your sight. Please forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Father, we pray for our world. In particular, at this time, we pray about the coronavirus. We pray for protection from the virus for all people. We pray for governments and health authorities around the world that you will give them wisdom in dealing with this global crisis. We pray for those who have been exposed to the virus that your hand of healing will be upon them. We pray for those many people who have been affected by their time in lockdown. 
We pray for scientists and researchers who are seeking cures and vaccines that they may know your guiding hand. With vaccines now being administered in many countries, we pray that these will be successful in helping us all return to a normal life. But we also pray for those people who are now starting to question what it means to enjoy a normal life. And Father, we pray that they will find the answer in you. This weekend has been designated as Religious Freedom Weekend and churches throughout Australia are today praying about global persecution and for religious freedom in Australia. So Father, we join with churches around Australia in praying that those deprived of liberty and religious freedom rights would be comforted in their distress that the hearts of leaders inflicting or permitting suffering would be stirred towards justice, truth and righteousness, that those persecuted for their beliefs would find the strength to persevere, that we would develop bonds of affection and partner with international faith communities, and that Australians would offer constant prayers and tangible financial support to afflicted faith communities all across the world. Father, we pray further, together with many other churches around our country, that those exercising their faith commitments in public life here in Australia would be protected by laws, judges and political leaders, that policymakers, chief ministers, premiers and parliaments would respect and demonstrate sensitivity to the sincere beliefs of religious Australians, permitting them to live out their deeply held convictions in public life, that religious Australians would be free to express and advocate for their beliefs in the public sphere without fear of sanction or censorship, and that parliaments all over this country would respect the rights of religious people and institutions to provide counselling, prayer and spiritual support to all those who seek and consent to it. Father, we pray for our church. We pray especially for unity in the church, that we might be united in our faith in you and our love for you, and that we might resist the attempts of the evil one to disrupt our unity. May we be a church of prayer, a church in prayer, seeking your will and guidance. We pray about the Baptist Union of Victoria's health consultancy with TBC, that it can recommend structures and processes that address concerns and build up our church. We pray for our pastors, for Mel, for Caleb, for Triango, and for all their families, we pray especially for Mel and Heather at this time, that you'll grant them sufficient hours of rest and peace in you, as they work so hard for us. And we also pray for Triango, as he considers the step of ordination. We pray for Jenny in the office, for our elders and deacons, and for all those who volunteer for work around the church. As we seek new pastors for our church, we pray that you'll be preparing the right people, we pray for a rebuilding of the TBC Council and we pray that you will be moving in the hearts of the right people who might step forward to serve as de deacons and elders. We pray, we thank you for the English Congregation Committee and we pray that you'll be with them as they work to raise up new leaders and ministry teams to develop and implement ministry programs within our church. We pray for all the regular ministries and special events at TBC for your mighty blessings on them. We pray for Playgroup and for our children's and youth ministries. We pray for KYB, English Club, Beasley Boys, our home groups and our Christian Education and Schools Ministry. We thank you for all the people who volunteer for these ministries and we pray that you will add more people to their numbers. We pray for our missionaries, particularly at this time of COVID, that you will bless them and protect them and their families. We thank you for those who gave generously during Mission Month in May and we pray that we might continue to be a church that powerfully supports missions. We pray for the residents and staff of the Baptcare complex, and we pray that we as a church might be a blessing to them. We pray for the Zimbabwe Methodist congregation now meeting in our building. Father, we have people in our church who are suffering sickness, family bereavement, stress, family issues, visa issues, problems of many kinds. We pray that you'll be with all these people and their families. Comfort them, bless them, wrap your arms around them, surround them with your love. Let them feel your powerful presence. And Father, we pray that you will use us all to your glory. We pray for all these things in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Thank you, Martin, for leading us in prayer. We have a guest preacher this morning. I'm actually preaching with the Cantonese congregation uh, for this online service. And Jeff Maddock, who is state leader for global interaction in Victoria and Tasmania, he is our preacher on video this morning. And uh, Global Interaction is our Baptist Global Mission Agency. And we've been focusing on global mission in the month of May. So uh, Jeff will uh, speak to us about sharing God's love. And he will be referring to John chapter 3 and verse 16. We're, we're to share God's love with the whole world including the street where you and I live. Before we hear from Jeff, let's meditate on a, on a song, which is a statement of faith, a statement of trust in the love of God. And we will have uh, this uh, song played to us now and we can meditate on the words and make them our own. He will hold me fast.
Greetings. It's my great pleasure to share with you some reflections on our work in mission. I would like us to specifically dwell on mission from the perspective of God's love and how we become caught up in vibrant communities by sharing in that same love. At Global Interaction, we're committed to seeing vibrant communities all over the world following Jesus in their own distinctive ways. This is not simply one of our organisational goals. This is a commitment that flows from our conviction that nothing matters more than sharing God's love for the world. God's love for the world, in other words, is the fountainhead for all we hope to do in mission. When we talk about God's love for the world, certain scriptures uh, leap to mind, but there's one in particular that captures the Christian imagination. You've probably already guessed the book and the chapter and the verse I want us to look at today. That famous verse plastered on roadside church notice boards, printed in bold type on handmade posters at professional sporting events, and memorised by every Sunday school student worth their salt. It is, of course, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. I grew up with the sound of John 3, 16 in my ears, and maybe you did too. It's such a familiar verse to many of us that it may even have lost some of its power, some of its impact over us. For God so loved the world. It's a profoundly radical idea. The God who made the world and all that is in it. The God who summons the universe into existence. The God who argues with Job and subdues the slave-driving superpower of Egypt and causes the seasons to come and to go. This God loves the world so much as to submit to the frailty of being human. When we come to John 3.16, it's easy to rush ahead to the parts about saving and the none shall perish, the condemning and the believing and the judgment and the eternal life. Pretty soon we're marching into the Judean countryside with Jesus and the disciples. We're striding towards Samaria and that famous encounter with the woman at Jacob's well. But I'd like us to linger a little while longer with this simple and startling fact. God loves the world. Nothing matters more than sharing God's love for the world. At Global Interaction, we've recently worked hard to distill down our values, our convictions and our commitments. After much prayer and reflection and countless conversations and consultations with our stakeholders and partners and workers, we've developed a roadmap that will direct our steps as an agency for the next five years. And I encourage you to download it from our website and take a look. As a result of this process, we have emphatically settled on the reason we exist as an organisation. And it's simply this, because nothing matters more than sharing God's love for the world. And this leads us back to the words of Jesus uh, that he spoke to Nicodemus. For God so loved the world. From my own belief and experience, uh, John 3.16 puts its finger on the gentle but persistent pulse of mis mission. This love is the steady heartbeat of every worthy missionary endeavour and of every vibrant community that emerges from the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus. But it's clearly not enough to simply announce this fact of God's love for the world. We need to internalise this same love. We need to let it shape us and then for us to articulate this love to the people and the places all around us. Jesus is our pioneer and our teacher in this endeavour and in every regard. To see what this looks like, Let's hear a story from Kim, one of our intercultural workers in Cambodia. Hi, my name's Kim Barnes and I live and work in Cambodia for Global Interaction along with my family. We've been there for the last two years. I want to tell you the story today of a lady that I've met called Srey Jun. Srey Jun grew up living and working on the rubbish dump in Siem Reap where she scavenged rubbish for a living. 
About a year ago, she came to work in the sewing centre where I've been helping out. And during that last year, she's been hearing the stories of the Bible told to her. These stories haven't always made sense to her, but she has listened intently all along. A few months ago, Srejum's husband got very drunk and tried to cut off his own hand. Srejum told me this story many times of how afraid she was, how scared she was for his life and for the livelihood of their family if he was to die or not be able to work anymore. Recently in one of our morning devotions, we looked into the Psalms and in particular Psalm 64. Hear my voice, O God, in my complaint. Preserve my life from dread of the enemy. This really spoke to Srejun. She couldn't believe that we would serve a God that would listen to her lament, that would hear her complaint and not be angry with her for complaining about the injustice of the world. This really transformed her life. And since that day, she has begun to really seek God in a new way. It's been really exciting watching Srejun come to life as she explores God's word. Please pray for us workers and for her and her family as we together learn what it is to follow Jesus in the Khmer culture. There's so much to celebrate in this tender story. What a beautiful surprise it is to discover that the God of the universe loves us, each one of us, and makes a way for us to be free of fear. I'm reminded of a definition offered by theologian John Frankie. He summarizes God's mission through the sent son in this way. He says, Jesus called the world to follow his way of life and participate in the kingdom of God, a community of love where everyone has enough and no one needs to be afraid. What an inspired way to think about vibrant communities where everyone has enough and no one needs to be afraid. As I said earlier, it's clearly not enough to simply announce the fact of God's love. We need to internalize it. We need to let it shape us and then enact that same love to those around us. We see this kind of love working its way out in Kim's story. Slowly but surely, vibrant communities emerge from this kind of love being practiced and enacted by followers of Jesus. But it's not uh, just for those who serve in far off lands. What about you and what about me? If we're to make our lives conform to the work of God's mission in the world, we will also need to become intimate with God's love for the world. We'll need to learn how to love the world in this John 3.16 way. And at the very least, this means cultivating an affection for the world as it is, not as it should be. And this is key because God doesn't withhold love for the world until, as my mum would say, it gets us act together. God's love for the world is without precondition or qualification. On a little side note, uh, it's, it's worth recognising what it doesn't say in John 3.16. It does not say, for God was so disappointed in the world. And it doesn't say, that God was so angry with the world, or even that for God was so loved the few religious, faithful people of the world. No, it actually says, for God to love the world. And even more accurately, it says, for God so loved the whole cosmos. That's the word John chooses to use. Well, we don't have time to go through all the references to God's love for the world and how this echoes through our lives in mission. Here are a few notable verses just from John. We know the first one, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. In John 13 it says, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples. John 15, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. John 17, as you have sent me into the world, Jesus prays, so I have sent them into the world. And John 20, Jesus says to them again, Shalom, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
In closing, I want to suggest a framework to consider your own participation in this mission of God-ordained love for the world. How can we get involved in God's love for the world? I had the privilege of living for a a good many years in a historic African-American inner-city neighbourhood. This experience of uh, downtown life in the United States taught me so much about community and mission and about the ways of Jesus. But the greatest gift was hearing the stories and coming to know the dear people who participated in the civil rights movement. As you probably know, this movement was predicated on the principle of loving nonviolence. That brilliant Baptist minister, Dr. Martin Luther King, insisted that there was no room for hate or retaliation in their great struggle for freedom. It was common for participants uh, in the movement to talk about internalising, organising and mobilising. And in that context, it was about the practice of non-violence. And I'd like to suggest uh, to you that this same framework can be helpful for us in the way we talk about mission shaped by God's love for the world. Simply put, we should internalise, organise and mobilise God's love. To internalise God's love means to do the deep devotional work of receiving God's love in our lives and growing a Jesus-shaped love for the world. Organising God's love means finding ways to practise this love in the world and and, um, how to do it in word and deed to the people and the places right around us. This is best done in community. And mobilising God's love means to take your organising to the next level, to lift your eyes beyond your immediate context and to look for ways to widen your sphere of influence as a person and as a community. I said at the beginning that our vision at Global Interaction is to see vibrant <clears throat> communities follow Jesus in their own distinctive ways. Uh, we see this happening through spirit-led people, humbly contextualising the good news in, in every place. People like Kim and Craig Barnes in Cambodia. A vibrant community will uh, inhabit God's love in such a way that relationships are restored, a fear is extinguished, and the world that God so loves, all of it, flourishes in every direction. Uh, You and I have a role in this kind of flourishing as we partner together across the street and across the world. Some of us will uh, heed the call and take our families making new homes and friends in far-off places. Others of us will summon the courage to initiate a caring relationship across difference in the very places where we already live. And many of us will commit uh, to supporting and to enabling the service of others in these various places. Uh, Whatever your place in this network of loving kindness, you too have a calling and mission. I hope you'll continue to pursue that calling and discover the great gift of participating in God's love for the world. I want to leave you with a word from one of my favourite poets and essayists, uh, Wendell Berry from Kentucky. He says this, I take literally the statement in the Gospel of John that God loves the world. I believe that the world was created and approved by love that it subsists, coheres, and endures by love, and that insofar as it is redeemable, it can only be redeemed by love. I believe that divine love incarnate and dwelling in the world summons the world always toward wholeness, which ultimately is reconciliation and atonement with God. Peace and grace to you. We do thank Jeff for that strong and clear word. Let us now follow up with prayer, respond in prayer to Jeff's word to us. Our Father in heaven, we do pray that by a work of the Holy Spirit, your love will be more and more imparted to us 
and that we can express that love, enact that love. We pray that our life of uh, witness and service, witness to the Lord and service to people for whom Jesus died, we pray that this life that we live, both individually and together, we pray that it can be shaped by the Holy Spirit working in our hearts, strengthening in us your love, Father, the love that the Spirit gives us. We pray that our mission can be shaped by your love. We pray that we will not just tell people about your love, but love them with your love in what we say and in what we do. And we pray that you will use our witness to see others saved and added to the Lord's church. We do now seek your blessing on global interaction, on all workers who in the name of Baptists in Australia are loving and serving people, loving and serving the Lord in other places. And of course, we include our missionary partners in that prayer for your blessing on your workers. And Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of announcements, because with the lockdown extended, uh, our activities are either in recess or online, and our ministry leaders uh, will be in touch with you with any developments, uh, so you can find out what's going on by checking your uh, texts on your phone or taking phone calls from our ministry leaders or checking your email. The other notice, I think, would be that the Family Forum planned for uh, next Tuesday, the 15th, uh, is postponed. And the reason for this is that there is a ceiling of 50 and um, we can't, uh, uh, we don't want to prevent anyone from attending. Uh, the 51st person would have to go back home. So it's best to postpone and as soon as uh, we can see our way clear, we will give the new date and have that family forum. Now Heather wants to tell you about the takeaway song for today. We've had this song be before, it's called For the Cause, but this is a different version and it's got children involved in it, which is just lovely. Um, but it fits in with what we've been talking about today and the cause is Christ we proclaim and Christ who showed his love for us by dying on the cross for us. So you may be able to join in because you might recognise it but otherwise just listen to the words and enjoy. Yes, we've heard this song before, we're getting to know it for the cause. This time uh, a children's choir and we sing along with the kids. Now a word of blessing that we can all say together as the words come up on screen from the book of Jude to him who is able to keep. Let's read it together. To, to him, him who, who is, is able, able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to, to the, the only God, God our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Have a great week, yes. even uh, in lockdown. And maybe by end of week, uh, things will be uh, less restricted for us. Let's keep looking to the Lord for blessings on Melbourne and Victoria with this virus. Mm -hmm. Bye from me. And bye from me as well. See you next Sunday. Bye.